Hello snakes, my name is Dante, and today, since I'm in Georgia, and uh, and there's bad internet there, I will just be doing another recorded podcast, and yeah, apparently some new spoilers came out from, from, uh, uh, from both Kamigawa Neon Dynasty coming in, in, uh, February, like, ne- like mid-February or something like that, and... Another five spoilers uh, from Infinity that is coming out in April, the first of April, to be precise, because, well, April Fool's, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So that's some special set we're gonna, both special sets that we're gonna receive, and yeah. So basically, we got a combo, a non bow, in which the combo is actually a, a card I actually saw in a commander game. Which is uh, which is uh, which yeah, apparently, uh, that player just used the combo like twice in a row, like in like two different commander games, and like yeah, he 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 was just playing a CDH deck. That was like yeah, in so that's the coolest spoilers and for. But we also got a combo and a non bow to top them off. So yeah, let's go in to the combo. And it is... week we got lion side diamond underworld breach and brain freeze i don't know i think i may have covered covered this combo in a previous podcast but not as a combo of the week this is now this is a combo of the week so yeah there's lion side diamond underworld breach and uh brain freeze so this combo how this works you you basically um you can start it off by if you if you do this on turn one, you basically play Lion's Eye Diamond, play an Underworld Breach, um, uh, then cast Brain Freeze from your graveyard by exiling some three other cards that you've got in your hand. You mill yourself for nine, then you have to exile three of those cards to play Lion's Eye Diamond, exile another three cards. Play Brain Freeze. So you basically can just mill yourself infinitely. Mill everyone else as well. Infinitely, probably like that. Or as long as you've got like enough cards in graveyards or library. So basically you can mill yourself for infinity. After that, play something like Fast as Oracle. Or you play... Uh, or you or you play something like... Uh... uh or you can play uh, uh, Lab Maniac, Jace, uh, Wielder of Mysteries, and yeah, you just win instantly. Like, well, not instantly with Laboratory Maniac, instantly with Fastest Oracle, semi instantly with Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, because you can draw a card with his plus one ability. It literally, is just a Fox Scout. Yeah. And yeah, that was like, he just pulled it off two times in a row. Then the third time he just decided to use a Tainted Pact with, uh, with Fastest Oracle. Which, well, Tainted Pact, it worked because he had no basics. If you have two of the same basic, it doesn't work. Because they have to be the same name. So basically just play one and one snow, or don't play basics. Play one basic, maybe. Yeah. So we can, if you're going for a Tainted Pact combo, the limit... Of uh, basics you can have in your deck is two, one and the sn- one normal version and the snow version of the of the basic land, for like each color. Like like you're playing one color, you have to, you can only have like two, two colors. You're playing like only four. Like and yeah, and he was playing three colors, so he could have had like six. And he had none. No way, he was playing four colors, so he could have eight. 
and he didn't. And the thing is that like I don't play those type of CDH combos and stuff like that because I think the CDH league just uh, shut down and stuff like that. Like, uh, uh, yeah, they just uh, it it wasn't really popular. So yeah, I think there's no more CDH league. So yeah, and then like I was and. And yeah, because the thing is, I usually just play like at least like 24 basics in each of my decks and my, each of my commander decks. So let's go into the non bow of the week. And we've got. Next blue mage. Oh, why does it? Why does it keep? Okay, that's uh, yeah. This is now it looks better. Next blue mage, and damping sphere. So the non bow. Well, basically, next blue mage with both. The, if you have both of those down, that's it. Now your lands tap for colorless mana, and that's it. No more. Uh, no more colors, not triple mana, that's it. You only get colors. Because if, if a land is tapped for two more mana, it produces colorless instead. And each spell just incrementally gets cast. Costs one more every time you cast a spell. Like. So it goes like, first spell is uh, no modification, second spell costs one more, third spell costs two more, and yeah, like... And that applies to everyone, but then if you have Nits Bloom Ancient which, out, which triples your mana, instead your lands are tapping for colorless. So you can't tap for color anymore. So basically your lands are practically useless. You can only cast the colorless spells or just using Mikus and Flatus. So yeah, there's like one big sacrifice you're going to have to make if you want, if you want to just shut off the other players I just yeah with the damping sphere it only works if you have Nits Bloom and uh, not Nits Bloom uh, Ancient uh Mikus and Flies like yeah and try and not use both in the same deck cause cause I, I know someone who actually accidentally used Mana Reflection with uh with damping sphere so that shut him off completely let's go in to the number 10 and it is Assembled Ensemble, 5 mana, X sits artifact creature, clown robot bard. And Vigilance, Assembled Ensemble's power is equal to the number of robots you control. Whenever you cast a spell with an artifact creature in its art, create a 1-1 one, one clown robot artifact creature token. So the thing with uh, the new Unset, they're replacing Silver Border by acorn uh, uh by acorn symbols like basically at the bottom of the card no matter the rarity like even if it's like uncommon rare mythic something like that there will be a symbol at the bottom similar to the similar to the rare symbol you know like how rare cards or something like that have like a little uh thing at the bottom to check if they're like real verified like yeah just uh just for protection and stuff like that well the theoretical silver board cards instead will have the acorn shape at the bottom. So yeah, cause cause this set is gonna be split between silver border and black black border apparently, and it's the first uh, silver border set to feature a different type of booster, cause they're having draft boosters and collectors boosters in the same set. So yeah, just uh, so yeah. Trying to sell the new space lands because we're getting like space lands and space shocks as well, like space shock lands and space basics. So, yeah, they're really cool. So that is a number ten. Now to the simple. No, not simple. It's just a normal. It's just number nine. Because well, yeah, special animations. 
Because yeah, New Year's Eve is between like three days. In four days, it's going to be 2022. Wow, that's incredible. Water gun balloon game. Two mana artifact. As it enters the battlefield, each player puts the pop. It puts a pop counter on zero. And since there is no zero on this, well, well, yeah, use the bullseye or something. I don't know. So you pl you track it on zero. Each player tracks one on zero. Whenever they cast a spell, they move up one on the water gun, water gun balloon game. And when the player's pop counter hits 5, they create, they create a 5-5 five, five pink uh, giant teddy bear and resets all the pop counters to 0. So that's the release promo, apparently. So yeah, this, they're reprinting Water Gun, Gun Balloon game. And and yeah, it's, uh, it's the release promo. And like, literally, uh, every 5 spells you cast, basically, it, Oh, not just their own one, all of them. So if you can like cast five spells before anyone else does, you can get a five-five uh, uh, teddy bear. But then like, and then reset everyone. But then like, so, so you just have to try and cast five spells as much as fast as possible. So yeah, it's because like the original like uh, water gun balloon game, you just have to like compete with the others and like see who's gonna win and then like the winner is like gonna take home the prize so you're just competing with other players yeah like but anyway, like i once played like some kind of like uh uh night game like some horse horse racing where you just have to like throw in like a ball or something and then like depending on where it lands your horse just keeps on advance advancing and then the first one to the end like you just do throw it fast as possible to, and the first one to the end will win the, the prize and then like there's more the prize is bigger depending on how many players there are but the fun part was just the competition there was like yeah it was fun let's go into the number eight and it is Kyodai, Soul of Kamigawa. Yeah, Kyodai. Yeah, 4 mana, 3-3, free, free, legendary dragon spear. With flash flying, and when it enters the battlefield, another target permanent gains indestructible for as long as you control Kyodai. And for the Wooberg, it gets plus 5% 5 on turn of turn. So, this is a fun 5 color commander, but I don't know. It's like, doesn't seem that good. Just The only thing it acts is as a... Is as a... It is a permanent protector, so it protects like one permanent. As long as like Kyoda is there, so they have to kill Kyoda before killing off that permanent. Protect like one time and stuff like that, and then, like you can uh, just pump it up with with Wubergs and stuff. Yeah, like use stuff with like use Kyoda in a Ramos deck or something, just to try and uh, get to get five counters on Ramos. Empty it out, give Kyodai plus 10 plus 10, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know, it just uh, doesn't seem that good, but it is cool. It's just uh, just the 10 spoilers that I currently for now, like at the time of, of me just finding them. I mean, there could have been some more spoilers now, but yeah, at the, at the time I was uh, setting it up and preparing this, well, these were the 10 cards. I found so yeah that's our number eight. Let's go into our number seven. And it is Takinuma, abandoned Maya. 
well, appear, it appears it channels back. It's a legendary land, tap for black, and uh, you can channel for four mana. Wait, what? Wait, does it say four mana? Uh, that's the only image we have for Takenuma. So we can't exactly confirm what it does. Well, I think it's like you some amount of mana discard it, mill three cards and return the creature, or, uh, or yeah. A, a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand. And this ability costs one less for each legendary creature you control. It, isn't, it doesn't say how much does it cost, but I think it's like it's just uh, some number and black. So yeah. But it gets cheaper though, that's the cool thing. Let's go in to our number six. And it is. Sushi, the blazing sky, four mana, four four legendary dragon spirit, for flying and trample, and when it dies, choose one, uh, through a light up the stage effect, or create free treasures. Yeah, just light up the stage or create free treasures. That's like that's Sushi's abilities. It's a really cool card. Like it just, it's just a dragon, and when it dies, you can just do a. You can just choose between two effects. You can ramp, or you can just uh, uh, get two cards to play. It's really interesting. It's a, and the thing is, it's in red. So yeah. So that's like a really cool card. That's our number six. Now let's go in to our number five, and it is. Sugu, Devouring Chaos. Yep, he's back, but well, different card though for for the same heartless hit hit of Sugu. Four mana, four four legendary ogre demon with black and sacrifice creature to scry to. Then two in a red, just three mana taps. Edge out top card of the library. You may play that card this turn. When you exile non land card this way, hit it Sugu, Devouring Chaos deals damage equal to exile. Cards mana value to any target. The cool thing about Hidetsugu is that it's not like Chandra, uh, it's, it's not like uh, the Kaladesh Chandra's ability, because Kaladesh Chandra's ability was plus one, ends out of card library. You may instantly play it, but if you don't, it deals two damage to each opponent. Well, this one, you have to edge out it, play it, and regardless of what happens, if you play it or don't play it, you get to deal damage, and then you can cast it at any time, even. So, yeah. The bad part is getting the land. When you're playing, when you're using the Chandra, if you get the land, you straight away just deal two damage because you can't cast it. Yeah. And the thing is that, like with Chandra, you could like uh, use Teferi's emblem, the the Teferi from the from the commander deck. Uh, use his emblem, and. Uh, and then you can activate her plus one like in any player's turn, so you could just flash the top card of your library, like yeah, in like instantly cast and on the in the only opportunity and stuff like that. And like when like hit so you can activate it any time. But like if you're using it in someone else's turn, you can only cast like instance or flash or something like that. But you can still hit the damage nonetheless. That's our number five. Now to the number four, and it is. The Space Family Goblin Sin. Four mana, one one legendary goblin guest. With as trample as long as you've rolled three or more dice this turn. 
when you every year old die, put a plus one fun counter on the face of the family goblins. And cool thing about this, it is actually black bordered. So, so the cool thing about, about this one is that if you're playing like dice roll synergy and stuff like that, like this set's gonna have some dice roll stuff and also. And then there's also Dungeons and Dragons, which had the D20 mechanic. So that was the dice rolling, uh, that was like taken from from uh, unsets. The thing is, the unsets had the D6 rolling, and one card for the D20 rolling, which is the sort of Dungeons and Dragons. And now, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, they, they made a Dungeons and Dragons set, which created, which actually made the rolling D20s mechanic. Not for rolling other dice, uh, just rolling d20s and stuff. And now they're implement implementing it as a blackboard mechanic, so it's going to be in this set. So yeah, if they add gold color to the, uh, if they add gold as an actual color, then that's it. Sort of Dungeons and Dragons can now be blackboarded because thing is that the only thing, the things that made it silver bordered was it's an IP and. Magic Gathering initially did not have blackboard IPs. Now they do. Then they had a gold color and dice rolling. Now dice rolling is a is a mechanic, and and Dungeons and Dragons is an IP. Now the so they have uh, Dungeons and Dragons in the game, like it's an official set. Like initially, the only ones they had, the only IPs was like. Uh, was uh, Transformers, uh, the Sword of Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, Nerf War. Like uh, they had Grimlock as an actual card. Then they put My Little Pony, like three of those, like the three ponies. And then like, and then they started doing partnerships with like Godzilla, replacing like some other cards, like well, making Godzilla variants for some cards. Um, new uh. Stranger Things and uh, uh, and what what else? Oh yeah, uh, Walking Dead, Dracula, and they almost put Harry Potter into the game. They they also got like uh, Dungeons and Dragons as well, yeah. And now they're gonna make some uh, Street Fighter, Fortnite. They they already made Ar uh, League of Legends for Arcane. They're gonna make. Street Fighter, Fortnite, uh, Lord of the Rings, and uh, Warhammer. So let's let's go into the number three, and it is General cosplay. One mana artifact equipment. When it becomes attached to a creature, choose a creature card name with an, an identical mana cost. That creature becomes a copy of the card with the chosen name until killer cosplay becomes unattached from it. And uh and equip free. It's, it's so cool. It's a it's a it's a acorn symbol card, so yes, the, so it's technically silver board, like yeah, n now we don't go by silver border, black border. We go like a uh, normal, normal symbol and a uh, acorn symbol. Like, why are they doing this? Like, can't they just make borders and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and I like the flavor test. So I was like, like ah, Hans, run, get the camera. He's adorable. And like, Steffi, Bob's daughter, whoever that is. Nets words, oh my goodness! Nets, Nets words, wow. <laughs> that's like, that's like so funny. Like they're referencing the original Lurgoy card and also Silver Border Akans Run card. Also, Revenant and Hans saying not again. So remember, we got like Safi Eriksson and Hans Eriksson. What is that? I don't know. Let's go in to the number two. And it is.
Kaito Shizuki. Free man of free loyalty, legendary planeswalker Kaito, and uh, when as the admin of your end step, if it enters the battlefield this turn, he phases out. So he has one turn of protection, basically when you cast him, because play him once, and you play him plus one him, and then uh, and then like uh, and then that's it. He just uh, phases out for a turn, so they can't attack him. And he comes back. You can just uh, continue doing his abilities. We can just do plus one to loot, minus two, create a one on ninja and blockable. And minus seven, you can get an emblem with. When a creature control deals combat damage to player, search your library for a blue or black creature. Put it on the battlefield and shuffle. So this one, you can just He can get to at least five loyalty, like without doing anything. Because you plus one, he goes to four. Phases out, they can't attack him or do anything to him. Plus one, he's on five. So you just need to protect him for two more. Uh, so you have to protect him. Uh, one, two, three turns. And then if you want to emblem him and kill him, it'll be after doing the minus seven. Well, yeah, he, that's it. Three turns to, to protect him. And otherwise, it's four turns to protect him if you want to keep him alive. Oh, the set code is Neo. Pretty cool. So yeah, let's go in to the number one. And it is... It is a free mana instant destroy target creature. If that creature dies this way, control creates two copies of the creature, except they're half the power and toughness. Uh, the, and round it up! Wait, round it up! So when you saw the creature in half, if you had an odd power and toughness, then the total power and toughness is gonna be higher than what it started with. Oh my god, like. Alright, you saw in half, you 5-5, five, five. you got two free frees. Wow. But then like, uh, uh, saw 4-4, four, four, you get two 2-2s. Two, so it's same with evens. With odds, you're actually getting one higher. Yeah, in terms of power and toughness. So it's like, really cool. So you should do this like to the, to your own creatures and stuff like that. Like, but then sometimes you can just uh, uh, saw the opponent's creatures in half. Yeah, you know, like even like you can duplicate a one one. Like you killed one one, you create two one ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like so cool. And then like uh, zero one, you get two zero ones. And like yeah, so this is so cool. Like. You can, and the thing is, it's a normal symbol card. It's not an acorn symbol. It's, it's actually an actual card you can use. And yeah, he split the label in half, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's just a. Uh, that's just like for worm coil engine. You use this with worm coil engine. Well, you get. Two worm coil engines that are each free freeze, and you get a free free life linker and a free free death toucher. Which then, when the death touch life linkers die, the two copies of worm coil engine they each create like their own death touch life linker. Okay, so on half your your worm coil engine, and then like when the worm coil engines the copies also die. You get free death touch worms and free lifelink worms. Oh my god, this this is gonna de destroy everything. <laughs> this is this is too powerful. And the good thing is like you can play this in commander, play this in legacy, like yeah, it's actual it's an actual card. 
And I mean, with the name Saw and Half, they could perfectly reprint it in an actual set. Like, yeah. It sounds like a perfect name contender for a card. Yeah, congratulations! You've reached the end of the podcast. So why don't you like and subscribe and uh, follow, uh, and follow my Twitch channel, Beyond Toy, share friends, stay tuned to my video streams, and podcasts. Podcasts. Well, this one wasn't live because, well, I was in Georgia. I, I'm in Georgia and, uh, yeah, it's a uh, bad internet. But, yeah, in general, they're going to be live. So stay tuned to every 6.30 p.m. CET. 4.30 GMT. So, no, 5.30 GMT. Sorry, what? No. 5.30 GMT. So stay tuned to them. Watch my other videos too. And also, try and check out those links in the description. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And bye.